Okay, okay, hello. It's a new week. These pugs, I cannot keep them out of here. They've just eaten and they want to disrupt my video process. But um, welcome to the chaotic world of my life with yarn and pugs. It, you know, it is what it is. I'm glad you're here and okay with it. So I didn't hear any feedback yet about what panel y'all wanted to start with. So I'm just going to go ahead and go with the way that the pattern goes. And uh, we'll start with panel one, which will be the back panel. Then we can get on to the left and the right knot panels. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so this is where it might help you to have the actual pattern to follow along with me. But um, yeah, we'll just work from here. So as you can see in the notes, it says that um, the pattern is written for the smallest size with changes for larger sizes in parentheses. When only one number is given, it applies to all sizes. To follow pattern more easily, highlight all numbers pertaining to your size. Um, I'm not highlighting any. And I don't usually on my own. The only times I'll highlight is if I actually print the pattern. Uh, you can also do it digitally in your pattern. And there are some programs that allow you to have that feature in it. Um, fortunately for me, I'm like right after the parenthesis. The one that I'm doing is the small. So you can also reference the sizes here and see like extra small, small, medium, large, extra large, like the order of what they are in there. And sometimes, do you see like even looking here, like that can get a little confusing. In my future templates, I think that I'll probably put the inches at the end because this is kind of hard to read, I'm realizing. Um, excuse my ums. Okay, so now we will start with a foundation single crochet of 91 for me. I did like update my nails, but I didn't refile them. So there are little humps in there because I chose not to fill them. And since then, the color has also come off. So I apologize. Please don't judge my nails. I'm here to help. Okay. And to me, done is better than perfect. So, okay. So now I have my gauge swatch. Some people like to keep their gauge swatch. For me, I like to use every bit of my yarn. Uh, some like to keep them as mementos, maybe make like a blanket out of it and remember all the things that you made or hang them, frame them, whatever. I, like I said, like to use my yarn. So I will unravel the whole thing. I'll have like a little bit of yarn ramen. Y'all know. Uh, growing up for me, I'm half Korean. So I always said, call it ramen. I know that there is no like Y in it, but mo and most people call it ramen, but I and I've tried to like force myself to say ramen instead of ramen. So once I get all of this done, some people just don't like to work with that crinkly stuff, and you can steam that out if you'd like. For me, I'm fine with it. I'm gonna go with it, and hopefully, it doesn't interfere in what we're trying to do here. So you can really visualize the foundation single crochets. Just a little bit more. When we did the swatch, we did do chains. Um, it is ideal to do the swatch the same exact way as your make. And honestly, we wanted to check it in the middle. So really, we should have done more rows anyways. If you want the complete accurate thing. I, I feel like I still have like a little bit of room with two inches of positive ease. So look, I'm okay with a little bit of imperfection. This is not a test. This is for me. But I will tell you what you're supposed to do so that you know as a learning lesson. Okay, so here we go. Uh, to do a foundation single crochet, you'll start with a slip knot. And I just went back to my slip knot. So hopefully you know how to do that. If not, YouTube videos are amazing. Okay, so let's, I wanna have the white backdrop so that you can really see well, but I also want you to be able to see the stitches 
I'll pop them in on the bottom here. Okay, so foundation single crochet 91. So to start your foundation single crochet, you will chain two, and then you'll go into the first chain that you made. I usually go in the back bump, so you'll have like the front and the back loop, then you have the back bump. So that's what I go in, go into the back bump, and then you'll pull up a loop. So you have two loops, then you chain through one, and then yarn over and pull through two. And that is your first foundation single crochet. So then we'll do that over and over again. Um, Okay, well this one's a little bit different. So the first one, you go into the chain and you wanna make sure that you're going through the two loops. So you see there's one and kind of one behind it and then there's a loop below. So basically go above that loop below. So you get this. You see that? There's two loops there two loops how do i show that and then there's one underneath okay so then pull up a loop chain one and then yarn over and pull through two that's two foundation single crochets okay i will do a few of these to the tune of some music two, three, four, five, six, seven foundation single crochets. So for my size of small, I'm going to do 91 extra small. You would do 81. Then um, my 91, the 99, 109, 119, 129, 137, 147, and 157. I will go ahead and put this on the bottom of the screen so that you'll know um, otherwise, you can just go get the pattern and be able to follow easily along with me in the future. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and make my 91 and I will be right back. I have got my 91 stitches. Yay. Um, I'm also hoping that you do know how to count your stitches. So if you um, can see, there is the two loops right here next to each Two loops right here next to each other. Front loop and then the back loop. So that makes one, and it's like kind of a V or you, that means one stitch there, two stitch there, three stitch there, four, and so forth. So um, maybe that'll help you easier with counting as you're going instead of counting each time you make a stitch because I know it takes a few steps to make one stitch. Okay, now we're gonna go to row two. So um, we, it might take a little bit for us to get to the repeats. That's another reason why it might be a little easier to have the pattern. Uh, we will, as you can see, be repeating row two and three several times. Um, so here we go. Okay, so with row two, we will chain one, super simple, chain. And then you'll wanna turn your work I didn't even put on there like turn. I guess I just assume you should know turn after the foundation single crochet. We're gonna work back and forth in panels. Um, that's crazy. Oh, I do have turn at the end of this row though. Okay, uh, chain one, turn, then single crochet one, chain one, skip one, single crochet one, chain one, skip one, 
single crochet. And you're gonna repeat this all the way to the very last stitch where you will be single crocheting in the last stitch because you're gonna um, end on the chain one, skip one. So you'll single crochet in the last stitch. Then we will um, turn our work and start row three. So let me finish this row and I will be back for row three. So in the notes, we did mention that all the chains count with the exception of the turning chain. So your stitch count should maintain the same since uh, every stitch in between that we skipped is filled with a chain. So those chains count in between. And we have not decreased or increased. So I am still at 91 stitches. It doesn't look like much for now but it will start to look like something as we get to growing. So with chain three, we're basically doing the opposite of what we did on chain two. So chain one, and we're always gonna single crochet in the first and the last stitches because we wanna end with clean ends to allow us the opportunity to seam our edges more cleanly and easily. So chain one, single crochet, one, and then you'll single crochet in the next chain space, chain one, skip the next single crochet, single crochet in the chain space, chain one, skip the next stitch, and so forth, till you get to the end, till you get to the last two stitches, then you will single crochet in the last two stitches and turn our work and it will still maintain the same stitch count again. So we will repeat the last two rows for 11 times and Tubby is getting tired of our chatter here. <laughs> Oh man, the snoring. I can't not have it there. I'm sorry. Um, so like I was saying, this should measure about six inches tall. If you want more length, you can continue in this repeat until your fabric me measures like nine inches or whatever you want to do. I mean, like it's up to you if you have the yarn and you're not worry about, worried about any yardage, then go on, like make it as long as you feel like. But remember, the knot is going to cinch it up and I personally wanna have it this length so that it hugs like my bust in the way that I want it to. Although this mostly adds length to the bottom. I don't know how the knot would respond to a lot of extra fabric, so it is at your own risk if you go against the grain of the pattern, obviously. So I'm gonna continue this till I get to the six inches, and I will be back. According to pattern, I should have six inches. However, obviously my gauge is off, I have five inches. I think that I'm gonna go ahead and stick to it. Um, I probably should go to the six inches, but uh, okay, so if you repeat, just know that you're gonna need to end on row three so that whenever we start doing the shaping part, um, it will start, like the sequence of the stitches will start in the proper area. So I do, oh, I also wanted to say this stitch is known as the linen stitch, the granite stitch, the moss stitch, like a gazillion different kind of names, but it is one of my favorite stitches. Um, I am needing to go take care of my dog. So I'm probably gonna leave this at that and then we can start shaping for next week. 
I do refer to this as panel one because it is reversible. So you can do, um, you can use this as the front or the back panel. So that's why it's just referred to as panel one. Anyway, uh, I might change my mind and go up to six inches by next week. But like I said, the pattern does say two row 25 here. I think, I'm thinking now I'm gonna go ahead and go up to the six inches, why not? I had full intentions of doing the full panel in this video. However, um, I do wanna keep like the video time limit down quite a bit so that it's easy for us to um, watch every week and that you can easily keep up with this every week. Like this is like a journey. We don't want to rush ourselves. We want to have a good time together. And then whenever you reference back, they're just little chunks and you can go straight to exactly what you need. So I hope that you like this format. Um, and just to explain also, if you haven't watched my previous videos, my dog, my oldest dog, Tamale, she has diabetes and she did have like a um, pancreatitis issue. Oh, it was before Christmas. I mean, like, honestly, I just lose track of time now and dates are nothing under this pandemic. So, uh, but she is doing well she recovered from the pancreatitis but she has to get checked once a month to make sure that her insulin amounts are appropriate so today today is the day where i need to get more needles and um check her blood sugar levels to see that we can keep it at the same dosage of insulin or whether she needs to go up and down so um thank you for your patience and i look forward to the next step of shaping on this panel uh, next week.